Hey, good morning, Akoi Region. I'm coming at you today. I am so excited. But before I get into introducing my special guest, I first have to do what pays the bills around here. So I've got to thank Southern Charm and Carrie Dole for this beautiful dress. She dressed me today. This necklace, the bracelets, and she is located on North Akoi inside of the Chattanooga Wellness Center. And I'm telling you, she's got her fall things in and they are absolutely beautiful. So do me a favor, make sure you stop by her store and buy something. I'm telling you, this stuff is so good and guess what? It's reasonable. It is so reasonable. So go by and tell her you saw her dress, her jewelry on Transforming Greatness, Hidden Gems of a Koei Region. So, I have been trying to get my pastor, I'm going to go through all this stuff, my pastor, my mentor, <laughs> my friend, <laughs> and my spiritual mother in this house, and she's in the house today. So I'm going to tell you, wherever you're sitting, give honor where honor is due, to Pastor Judy Jacobs Tuttle. <laughs> Tony Miles, I am so honored to be here today with you and Transforming Greatness, Hidden Gems of Akoi Region. Um, first of all, uh, this is not tit for tat, but let me just tell you how amazing you are oh. to this region. Let me tell you how amazing you are First of all, to me and Pastor, my husband, Pastor Jamie Tuttle, and our family, and then to Dwelling Place Church International, yes. and then to this city of Cleveland, Tennessee, and the surrounding region. What a blessing you have been since you have stepped foot in this area. And your heart for God, your heart for, of course, it wouldn't matter where you would go if God sent you here, your heart would be there if God mm -hmm. sent you to a place. And ever since you have been here, you have been making such an incredible impact. Mm -hmm. And I am so honored to call you my friend. I am honored that you're part of our church, that you're part of this. Our region don't understand how very blessed we are to have you and your beautiful mom oh. and your incredibly gorgeous daughter uh, a part of this region. And it is my honor to be mm -hmm. a part today and to celebrate. And I want to say, Welcome to all of my Facebook family yes. who are tuning in today, and uh, it's just going to be a great time. Yes, it is. It is. And you know what? I want to tell this. It's a quick testimony because I really want to get into what you're doing now, and I definitely want to get into the new book. Sure. Okay? But I want people to know, uh, some years ago, when I was, when I finally understood that I had a calling on my mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and I didn't know exactly what to do but I kept hearing acceleration mm -hmm. acceleration mm -hmm. I heard that then yeah and so I went to seminary school mm -hmm. four years did four years in two years because I kept and only by the Holy Spirit that was done yeah. and then I kept asking God I said I'm starting off in this so late I need a mentor and I'll never forget, you came to, God will move heaven and earth to get something to you. Absolutely. No you doubt. You came to Monroe, Ohio, okay. to Solid Rock Church. Yes, amazing place. <laughs> for Darlene Bishop, Time for Purification <laughs> yeah. Conference. Yeah. And you preached the word. Praise God. And then you started talking about the International Institute of Mentoring. And I can tell, as a volunteer, we had to sit in the balcony, and I was all the way back. And I went somewhere in God, but it was like it was just you and me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And I knew as you talked, I heard the God say, that's your mentor. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of like Bishop Jacob <laughs> says, it's a click. It's a click. It's a click. Oh, my God, you it was. You know immediately. You know. Mm -hmm. And I came here to Cleveland, Tennessee. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> After putting in the application and accepted in the International Institute of Mentoring. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, I wouldn't be where I am mm -hmm. doing my kingdom assignment. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a kingdom assignment. Absolutely. And I would have never been able to move here. Not that you coached me to move here. No, no, but no. But you encouraged me to step into my destiny. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what it was, and I'll never forget after our first session, you looked at me and said, before this weekend is over, mm -hmm. you'll know your assignment. Yep. And I'm just here to say, for all those people out there that need a mentor, this is what happened to me. Mm -hmm. I got connected with my mentor. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm so glad you did. <laughs> I am too. And locked arms, and now... I am walking in my kingdom assignment. And it's huge. And it's huge. Mm -hmm. It is huge. Mm -hmm. And it's huge. So I just want to say publicly to you, mm -hmm. thank you. You're precious to me. And I love you. I love you with all my heart. And I love doing the kingdom work with you yeah. and your husband. Well, you are a kingdom builder, <laughs> and you're also a kingdom runner. And I am too. I run, yes. for, I run for my king. Yes. Jesus. Yes. And that's what this all about is building the kingdom of God, advancing the kingdom of God before his second return. And I believe that um, God is using you in such an, a powerful way to advance his kingdom in this region and other other places in this nation. And um, and I believe that the greatest things are still ahead. Yes, it is. Because we're doing them together. Amen. <laughs> all right. Hey, now you got to tell us all that's going on. I can go on and on. You know she's uh, a wife, a mother, a c pastor, evangelist, songwriter, mm -hmm. author, psalmist, mentor. I can go on and on. Well, you're, you're making me tired saying all that. No, but that's what kingdom runners do. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and God blesses you with a wonderful husband and mm -hmm. children and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, but I know you're doing a lot of new things and a lot of great things. So in your own words, just tell people what's going on and take a couple of minutes and talk about that. And then after that, let's talk about the new book. Well, you know, uh, you've already mentioned the International Institute of Mentoring. Yes. And the International Institute of Mentoring is, um, there's two ways you can get wisdom. One is through mistakes and the other is through a mentor. Yes. And the International Institute of Mentoring is a place where you can come, you can train, you can uh, develop your, your giftings and your callings. And it is a place, you know, I, I love to be around people of like faith, like spirit, like yes. destiny, like yes. anointing. And I um, often tell people, you know, my husband and I and our family, we love to play golf. And um, so I, I love to play with my husband because he likes, he lets me cheat. You know? <laughs> So, and, and don't send her any emails about that or any, no. or my, me either. So, but uh, it's a great, it's a game for heaven's sake. Um, but I like to play with people who are better than I am. I don't want to play with people who are on the same level yes, as me. I get it. Because I won't, I won't learn anything. Yeah. So the International Institute of Mentoring is being around people who, uh, who, who, like the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. And so that's one thing that we're involved in. Of course, we have an amazing church. My husband, an incredible, uh, has an incredible passion for the community. Yes, he incredible does. passion for people. As a marriage and family counselor, he's very much um, zero is in on families. And then he's very committed to this community. Yes, uh, he is. We have a huge community here of, of college students. Yes. And, um, and also just people. We're just people. And we're, we're interracial church. Uh, me and him are interracially married, married and uh, our children. And so we attract interracial marriages. And uh, I think there's like 17 different nationalities <laughs> in our church. church. Yes. So, um, you know, I'm continuing to, uh, to minister uh, around the world. I'll be in Paris, France, at one of the, uh, the yes. biggest churches in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. This weekend, I think it's like 35,000 people 
And so I'll be there this weekend ministering. And so our ministry it takes us uh, local and global. And very, very excited about uh, what God is doing. Of course, I love to sing. That's one of the things that put God put in my heart and yes, my spirit. Thomas. So I'm constantly um, uh, in the studio along with my daughters. I think you've had Kaylee and Erica yes, on here before. Yes, they've been on. <laughs> and they love their uh, Miss Tony. They just love their Miss Tony. Um, and, you know, so I am constantly being challenged with uh, producing new music and staying on that cutting edge of what God is saying and through music and, and through what the Lord is doing in the earth through the sung word. And then I, I'm a writer. I love to write. And so I have a book, a brand new book that's out, Tapestry of Love, uh, co-written by uh, a wonderful covenant friend, Kathy Kenimer. And then uh, I am in the process of writing other books uh, that will be helpful for, uh, for every age area. Uh, and so wow. it's just uh, it's just a busy time in the kingdom yes. and, and trying to advance the kingdom, advance yes. God's agenda, yes. advance and, and come alongside of families, uh, adults, young adults, yes. uh, uh, single adults, single parents and and married uh, families. So uh, we're just doing our part in this part of the world and in other parts of the world that God opens doors to uh, to be faithful. To, to, as I said earlier, to be a kingdom runner. Yes. Now, as an author, you've written many books. Mm -hmm. uh, some of my favorites, Don't Miss Your Moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's uh, never too late. Come on. <laughs> to live your best. Come it's on. It's never too late. There's two things about God. He is a, he is a restorer, yes. and he can, uh, he can buy back everything that the enemy has, has stolen. Yes. And so he can, he can transform your life. And sometimes people quit. They think, you know, I always tell people, don't jump off the train in the middle of the tunnel. Yes, don't do it. You're, I love don't, that. don't do that. Don't do it. Don't quit. Because if you quit, it forfeits your blessings. Yes. It forfeits your miracle. And so uh, I love writing, and yes. I'll, I'll continue to write until Jesus comes or comes and gets me. I love it. Stand strong. Stand strong. All mm. these books have changed my life because mm. I've read all of them. I've had to live them out. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Take it by force. Mm. That's my bestseller. Yes, yes, yes. And then stun in other languages. Many languages. All of you. All, all of, of my them. books are in all different kinds of languages. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And here's one of my favorites, though. Mm -hmm. You are anointed for this. Uh, Isaiah uh, speaking <laughs> said, "The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord so hath anointed, anointed me. me." And this is the thing about it is. Uh, Minister Tony, is that you are anointed to sing, you're anointed to preach, you're anointed to, uh, to win souls, you're anointed, but you're also anointed uh, to uh, be an entrepreneur. You're yes. anointed in the marketplace. Yes. You're anointed to, uh, to, to raise a family. You're anointed to, uh, to have a successful marriage. But, you're, but on the other side of that, you're also anointed to get through that situation you're in right now. You may be fighting the biggest fight of your life, but you are anointed. Because sometimes God won't get you out. No. God will bring you through. through. And, you know, and, you know, we talk about the word uh, W-O-R-K uh -huh. because it's such an ugly, <laughs> nasty word. Yes, and nobody wants to work for nothing. But sometimes, you know, the, God is all the while effectually at work wow. in us, both to will and to do. He makes our will conform to his will and so the anointing of God is there to lift you to encourage you to push you to strengthen you and it's a powerful book yes it is it's a powerful and book. somebody needed to hear that yeah really needed to hear that today and then there's this new and I'm gonna already call this thing because the one thing I know is I'm getting ready to prophesy. Come on. Bestseller. Come on. New York I Times bestseller. I love it. Because we really need to understand yeah. the tapestry of love, the mm -hmm. covenant 
covenant with our Father mm -hmm. because we've got to allow this love to heal this nation. Yeah. So I'm just going to take the next few minutes and just let you talk about the tapestry of love. And it's based on scripture, Col Colossians 2 and 2. So you take it away. Yeah, Colossians 2, 2 says, I want you woven into a tapestry of love. And here, here it is, in touch with everything there is to know about God. Yes. And, you know, we talked about God always has a desire. Uh, God always has a desire to take you up. Because the Bible says we go from strength to strength, from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Yes. And it takes um, a man and a woman of God who is always seeking after God to go after God. And I want to know God like, like Paul knew him. I want to yes. know the depth and the length and the breadth and the height of, of his riches and of his glory. Yes. And so, you know, we talked about how, you know, work, that word is such an ugly word because nobody wants to work, no, you know, nobody wants to work on their marriage, they want to work on their weight, they don't want to work on their relationship with their family. Yes. They don't, they, they, you know, hey, let's just break it down and be break real. Nobody wants to work, period, <laughs> period. Get up every day and go to work. But, you know, you know, the, I, I just quoted earlier, the, the Father God is, is always doing something. Yes, sometimes it's really huge and sometimes it's really small. Yes. But the, 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 the thing you have to keep in mind is that God is always working. You know, at an earlier age, I was, I was involved in a culture of, of worship, in a culture of church. Yes. As a baby of 12, I was, you know, drawn into that with my mother, my father, uh, my sisters. My, and my brothers who set an example of what it looked like to serve God. My mother just didn't tell us to pray. My mother showed us how to pray. She got down with us mm -hmm. and she fasted with us. Yeah. And so God has always had a desire to, to bring us into covenant and, you know, and it's personal and it's very much involved with, with who he is and what he wants to, be, to become. And, you know, there's always been a pattern of how God wants to bless us. Matthew 6, 33 says, yes. Seek ye first the, the kingdom, kingdom of God and his yes. righteousness, and then all of these things will be added. Yes. Ephesians 2 says, We are his workmanship. Yes. It truly says his work of art. It, we are his design. We are his masterpiece created yes. in on. Christ Jesus. And here it is for good works. works. God wants to use you to, you know, uh, first, uh, the Philippians 1, 6 says that being confident of this one thing, that he who began a good work, it's a good work. Yeah. It's a great work. Yes. It's a powerful work. Yes. It's an anointed work. It's a strong work. The enemy will tell you it's a small work. No, mm -mm. anything that God does is big. <laughs> you don't believe me, look up in the sky. You know, so God prepared us in advance, the word says, for us to do, so to to cut, to make a covenant is to is to cut. It it is to agree. It means to meet together in agreement in a relationship. I can't go into the whole genre of what uh, the whole definition rather of what covenant means. Mm -hmm. It would take us for a while, but it means to make an agreement. So God made an agreement. First of all, He made an agreement with the heavens. He said, "Because in the beginning." Yeah. was God created the heavens and the earth. Yes. The earth was not for, without form and void. And then God's word begin, God's voice begins to speak. Yes. And he said, let there be. And so, and then the Bible says, and it was. Yes. So he made a covenant. That covenant is still speaking today. God is still speaking and saying, let there be, let there be. Let there be healings, let there yes. be miracles, let there be sight, let there be finances, let there be children delivered, household salvation, let there be peace. So God created the heaven, he created the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies, and you know that God is still creating those things? Yes, ma'am. And God also created us. Yes, and then God made a covenant with people. Abraham is the father of faith. Mm. Moses. Uh, he told to Moses, we're to, he gave us the commandments that we are to keep the commandments, commandments and obey them. God made a, command with, with, uh, made a covenant with David. David was a man after God's own heart. He was a worshiper. Yes. And then Jesus comes from David's lineage 
and Jesus makes a covenant and he makes a covenant with John the Baptist and and then Jesus made a covenant with people we made a covenant with us he says where I am there you may be also he says I will never leave you I will never forsake you I will be with you always even to the end of the world it's such a powerful book it is it's powerful. one of the most book, powerful books I've written can I tell you, it may be, look small, mm -hmm. guys, it may look small, yeah. but this is, I'm chewing on this. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's, you have to it, read it. You have to really read, read it. Because yeah. at first I thought I would just zip through it, mm -hmm. but I don't even want to zip through it. Yeah. I'm taking my time and I'm chewing on every word that is in this book. Yeah, and then God made, and then there's something that's very, very, uh, very strong and important in, in mine and my husband's yep. life. He made marriage covenants. Yes. So it is not good for man to be alone. Genesis two says, and so God made uh, God made Adam a helper that was comparable to him. Right. God made a helper. So right. so here's here's the deal. Uh, Eve came alongside. Yes. Of her husband. Yes. And so as a as a marriage partners, we walk side by right. side. Now, I love it that my husband is the king, priest, and prophet of the house. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who makes the ultimate decision. And I tell you, I don't want that responsibility. <laughs> I, I can have my opinion. Yes. And we can talk together about things that need to be decided as a couple. But I love it that he has the responsibility at the end of the day to say, okay, this is what I feel that this is what I feel the Lord is saying, this is what I've heard, and so I'm gonna be responsible for making this 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 decision. Yeah. And so, but the covenant marriage is 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 so strong, and I think that God is speaking because uh, we're seeing a decline in divorce rates. We're seeing God yes. just begin to raise up because this is what we know, two are better than one. Two are better than one. Yes. So if the devil's coming and telling you that, that you should just for, forsake your marriage or those, maybe maybe you can find someone that's better. Let me tell you, the one thing that I found out is God's going to work on me first. <laughs> He's going to work on me yes, first. Before he works on him, he'll work on me. So I just want to encourage you today in your marriage, don't quit on your marriage. God has a plan. God has a purpose for your marriage. And then number, number four is the mentorship covenant. We were talking about this yes. earlier where it, it, it is biblical because yes, is. there was a Moses and there was a Joshua. Yeah. And you know what's so funny is that Moses had, had sons, but God chose Joshua yes. to go alongside of Moses. We see, we see Elijah and Elisha. Elijah. We see uh, Paul and Timothy. Yes. And then we see Jesus and his disciples. Yes. And Jesus had many, many disciples. Yes. And then there were the 12. twelve. And then there were the three. Yes. And then there was John the Beloved. Yes. And then there was Jesus and his father. Yes. And so it goes on and on and on. And mentorship covenants are so important. You need a mentor in your life. You need someone. And this is the thing about a mentor. A mentor is not perfect. Nope. Now, I'll be the <laughs> I'll be the first one to tell you that a mentor is not perfect, but a mentor is like a coach and a coach mm -hmm. sees what, you know, if, if you have an athlete, a young athlete uh, coming into uh, under under the uh, auspices of a coach, a coach can see the 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 the, the potential of yes. that athlete yes. and he can stretch that athlete. He can he can pull on him. And you know, and that's what I love about a mentor. A mentor sees what you can't see. And so it's very important to have people. Even, you know, I've got people who are, uh, uh, who are mentors that, I've, that, I've, that I'm not around. I love Pastor Jack Hayford, Dr. Hayford. Yeah. And he mentors me constantly through his, his spirit-filled Bible. I, I, I love, uh, I love uh, people that have already left this planet. I love people like Catherine Coleman oh, who, who spoke yes. into my life uh, through her books and through her videos. And there's other people that can speak. And then there's other people that, uh, that you know, you need, you need somebody touching you with skin on. Yes. Because, because the, uh, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So you need somebody that, that you can look up to. You need somebody that you can touch. You need somebody that can speak into speak your, in life. your life. And so, um, so then number five, there's the, the new covenant, the word became flesh. Yeah. The old covenant is passed and now here comes Jesus. Oh. Yeah. Come on. John 1 14. <laughs> 
the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld him as the only begotten Son of the Father, full of mm. grace and full of truth. Yeah. Jesus came. The, the Jesus came in flesh. He came and he humbled himself yes. uh, to death, even the death of the cross. And then we go on in to talk about the characteristics of covenant. What does covenant really look like? It's having faith. It's having virtue. Virtue is, and you have to interrupt me anytime you want to. No, you go ahead. Uh, 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 the co uh, covenant is having virtue, which, which is really moral excellence. It's walking, I love that. It's walking in excellence. It's walking. It's really walking in right living. living. You know, if you since uh, since we were small, we know what's right <laughs> and we know what's wrong. Oh. We knew when we were kids, you know, that it was wrong to steal that cookie when mommy says, "No, you can't have a cookie before dinner." And and you know, you, you, did you eat that cookie with cookie crumbs all over their mouth? <laughs> no. Okay. So it's right living. It's yeah. knowing the difference between right and wrong, and something inside of you that says. I want to follow after Christ. Yeah. I want to be a disciple of Christ. I want to be, here it is, I want to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus. And, and the characteristics of covenant is knowledge, knowing him. Knowing him is the, in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering. Knowing who, you see, when you get to know who Jesus is, when you get to know not just the, the just the, uh, uh, the surface, you know, you and I are friends, yes. but I know you like, uh, like your associates don't know you. Right. I love you. I know you. Uh, I may not know you as much as your mom knows you, obviously, or your daughter knows you, but, <laughs> but I know you as a person. And so because of that, I have knowledge of you. And that's yes. what God wants. That's what it was all about in the beginning in the yes. garden. He wanted to have fellowship. And the Bible says, in the cool of the day, yes. which lets me know God don't like heat. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, in the cool of the day, he would come down and yeah. he would fellowship with Adam and Eve. Another thing is to have the characteristics of covenant is, is having self-control, is being patient with people that you love. Mm. And, and, you know, what is, is patience? Is, you know, I love, the, I love the, the definition of patience. It's like having perseverance. Mm -hmm. It's hanging in there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and perseverance, to describe perseverance, it's kind of like wrestling with a gorilla. Yes, man. Yeah. Come on. You, you, you don't you don't quit when you get tired. You quit, quit when, when the, the when the gorilla, gorilla gets, gets tired. tired. <laughs> and so you have to persevere in covenant relationships. Oh, you know, because sometimes you know people will um, people are not perfect. I don't know if you know that or not, but people are not perfect. I do. And thank know that. God, there's not anybody on the planet that's, that's perfect. perfect. There's only one perfect one, and his name is Jesus, and he sits beside the right hand of the Father. Yes. So. I'm not there, so and you're not there either. And until we see him, the Bible says we will not only see him, but we will be like, like him. him. So, uh, so it's it's having patience with people. It's having knowledge of who people are, yes. getting to know them, and then it's having godliness. And when you have a godliness of of covenant, a characteristic of covenant is godliness, which is a Godward attitude. It's being in the likeness of God. You know, God doesn't want, you know, when you say you're to be perfect and holy as he is perfect. And, and the word uh, perfect doesn't mean uh, you, you don't make mistakes. Because David said, you know, create in me, mm -hmm. create. Because God is always, like we talked about earlier, God's always creating. Creating. So he says, create in me a clean, clean heart. So yes. it's, it's going after, going after God. Paul says, I press toward the prize. I press, I push myself toward the prize of the high calling of God. So it means to press forward, to have a God, godly attitude and a well-pleasing attitude toward God. Amen. And then, uh, what, is, what is the characteristics of covenant? Uh, talking about my book here, Tapestry of Love, uh -huh. uh, the, the, uh, how to walk in the covenant relationship with God. It is having brotherly kindness. And, you know, and, and kindness is, is such a virtue that, uh, that if we're not careful in this, in this society, in this culture, right now, this culture is so, uh, you know, it, it's so volatile right now. Yeah. It's just, it's, 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 it's really, uh, it, it, 
I don't know how to say anything except it's really scary. Yes. How there's no kindness toward there's no there's nobody that's that's uh, that's just respects one another. Yes. And the Bible says respect one another and and exalt one another and and uh, to be uh, uh, to be have brotherly kindness, kindness. one toward another and respect respect each other and pr here's the big one prefer bro your brother and your sister we don't we don't have that <laughs> it's like hey i'm i'm going first i'm yes. I, you know look at yes. me look at me who, who i am and look yes. at, no, we're to prefer tony please and then tony will come back and say no you please, please. No, and we'll be there all day going no you please <laughs> no you please so we are to have brotherly kindness and and to think on the brotherly kindness of jesus how kind and how gentle and how patient he was. Jesus said, you don't want to know what the kingdom looks like? The disciples said, show us, the, show us the heart of the Father. He says, when you've seen me, you've seen the, heart, you've seen the Father. Mm. But he says, you want to know what the kingdom looks like? And the Bible says he set a child in the midst of them. Mm. And the Bible says, unless you become as a child, child. Yes. finish that. Unless you become as a child, you, okay. won't, even, you, you won't even enter, enter. the kingdom yeah, yeah, of God. Yeah. You yeah, won't even yeah. enter no. the kingdom of God. No. Because when you see a child, a child is so open, they're so sweet, they're so kind to each transparent. other. Transparent. They're transparent. And and they just, <laughs> you know, they they have so much faith. Faith. I love I love when my girls were little. I used to have them lay hands on me because they had such so faith. faith. Mommy Jesus is going to heal you. Yes. Mommy Jesus is going to heal you right now. Yes. And you know, and I would uh I would I remember one time when we were having our Pursuit Women's Conference. And I, I asked Erica, Kaylee, I said, Kaylee, what is Jesus saying about our Pursuit Conference? She says, Mom, oh, all the family are gonna be there. And I'm like, okay, I know that all my sisters are coming, some of my brothers are coming. I said, that's good. You, you mean Aunt Nancy and Aunt Doris? And she said, no, Mommy, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and all the angels, all the family are gonna be there. I love that, I love it. <laughs> and so, brotherly kindness, and then, peace uh, and then the, the Bible says that the peace of God which passes mm. un understanding shall guard your mind and keep your mind and I love the perfect peace and perfect peace is nothing lacking nothing broken nothing, nothing missing. missing that's the character characteristic shalom, shalom. shalom. What, is, what is that's the characteristic of a covenant it's, it's the word shalom and peace yes. nothing lacking nothing broken nothing missing and then love 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 love, love. love first love. Corinthians 13 you want to know what love is <laughs> There it is. Whoa. Ooh. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Yes, ma'am. It'll ma tell you what love is. Yes, ma'am. And it's going to hit you upside the face, on the other side of the face, because love suffers long. Love is patient. Love is kind. And so it believes all things. It bears all things. Here's another one. It endures. endures all things. It endures all things. Love never, never fails. fails. You know, now abide it. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is, is love. Powerful, powerful, yeah. powerful. Yeah. And the whole time you were going, I just kept hearing, uh, as you were describing, I kept hearing the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. I kept hearing, mm -hmm. um, 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 just, you know, as you were going through description of the covenant and what it is. And... I really want to tell everybody that you have to get this book yeah. because, Pastor, you really hit on something right now. This is the time. Uh, this is a very um, uh, uh, tough time uh, in this world. But if we would just honor yeah. the covenant yeah. of love. And God is very, 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 uh, he is he is, he's very uh, uh, adamant about covenant. Yes, he is. He's very adamant about covenant. He takes covenant very, very seriously. Yes, he does. And and he, and he in this book you'll find out just exactly how serious covenant is. Yes, and so you need to go to. You can contact. Go to JudyJacobs.com and you can order this book. You can come to Dwelling Place Church International and pick up this book. Amazon.com. Amazon.com. All of those. All of those. Uh, Barnes and Noble. Yeah. You can get this book. Now, Pastor, I uh, I know we've went a little while and everybody's watching, but I cannot. I'm just flowing with the Holy Spirit because I do believe you have a word and a word for this region. 
And I want you to take that time and give that word. And when you give that word, we are going to uh, then end right there because I that, that's God's word coming forth. And then we will come back because we have got to talk about the Pursuit Women's Conference 2018. Amen. So we're going to come back and talk about another segment, and we're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. But for right now, I just feel it so strongly. The Holy Spirit is in here, and I know you have a word. I want you to look at that camera yep. and give that word. You know, since, uh, since January, actually before January, the end of December, um, God has been speaking to us with a hashtag, there will be miracles. And I really believe and feel that I'm talking to some people today who are in desperate need of a miracle. You're in desperate need of a breakthrough. You're at a place in, in your life where you've ne you find yourself where you've never been before. And let me tell you about God. As I stated earlier, God is a covenant keeping God. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent, the word says. If he said it, Numbers 23, 19, he will do it. If he spoke it, it will come to pass. And God has a miracle for you. You're watching today. What is a miracle? A miracle is a, is a supernatural intervention of God in the natural affairs of mankind. That's when God steps in when everything else fails, just like he did with Lazarus, four days. And today, I want to come into agreement with you for your miracle, whatever that way look like, whatever it is, if it's financial, if it's your children, your marriage, if it's your body, whatever you need today, God still performs miracles. I am the God that changeth not. Call unto me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not of, Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask, think, dream about, or even imagine. If you call, he'll come. If you'll call, he'll come. And the devil will tell you, you don't deserve it. You've done this. You've done. Well, the thing you need to know is the devil is a liar. So I'm coming into agreement with you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every person watching today through this uh, program and through this Facebooks, and I'm asking you that your power, I love it, your transforming greatness mm. would come through these, this computer and through these cameras and touch, and we expect testimonies. Yes. We expect miracles. Yes. We expect the supernatural, that you come on our natural and add your super and it becomes supernatural. Lord, we expect bodies to be healed. We expect household salvation. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen.